Okay, in this class I want to introduce uh, something called Hooke's Law, which is the law of physics that says the force required to extend or compress a spring by some distance is proportional to that distance. So if I have a string of some, what we call a natural length, uh, often denoted, and on our course always denoted with this symbol L0 or L sub 0, um, well the force required to extend that by some distance is proportional to that distance. So the force required to extend at a distance of x, well that would be half the force required to extend at a distance of 2x, a third of the force extended to a distance of 3x. So in other words, you know, if I double the amount of weight that's hanging on the end here, if I double the weight of this force hanging on the end of the spring, well then the spring is going to extend uh, quite twice as far. That's essentially what Hooke's law says. And we can translate that into algebra in this way. We say that the force on the spring by the object, it's proportional to, so it's some constant multiplied by the extension length here. Okay? And if I think of extension length as a displacement, the force on the string, on the spring by the object, you know, notice that force on the spring by the object, that's a downward force. Notice the uh, displacement here is a downward force. If I assume that's positive force and displacement, same direction. And so you'll often see uh, Hooke's law written like this. The force is equal to k times the extension length. Okay? And actually, quite often, instead of extension length, you'll just see the letter S or the letter X used in there. Let's just put in X for the moment. Okay, so this is the spring force. This F is of often called the spring force or the elastic force. Okay, K is known as the spring constant. And the word spring can be substituted for elastic in all these cases. Spring or elastic constant. And X is just, you know, the extension. Okay, so um, the force and the, the force on the spring and the extension will be always in the same direction. The force on the object by the spring, note, the force on the object by the spring will be in the other direction. So that would be the force on the object by the spring would be a negative of the force on the spring by the object. So they're in opposite directions. But if we're just talking about magnitude, uh, we can just kind of essentially remember this. Or this, that the force, the spring force, is equal to the spring constant uh, multiplied by the extension length. Spring force is equal to spring constant multiplied by the extension length. Remember, this is one of these things that come up everywhere. And so we can make k, f, or x the subject of that formula. The spring constant is equal to the spring force divided by the extension. The extension is equal to the spring force divided by the spring constant. Okay? The word elastic can replace the word spring in either of these, depending on whether we're talking about springs or elastic bands. So I want to have a look at a, a, a bit of a question here. It says, a string has a natural length of 10 and an elastic constant 20. It hangs vertically, so we've got some string hanging vertically and is connected to some kind of object at the base. The actual length of the string is 12. So what we have here is an actual length of 12, so that distance from the top to the bottom, that's 12. But remember, its natural length is 10. So what's the extension? The first thing I'm seeing is that the extension length here is always the actual length minus the natural length, which is going to be 12 subtract 10 in this case. 12 subtract 10 in this case. And that's equal to 2 meters. So we have an extension length of 2 meters here. The other thing, the elastic constant here, that's my k. k here is going to equal to 20. Notice the units newtons per, per meter. Because why newtons per meter? Well, remember going back here, the spring constant is force, which is measured in newtons, divided by extension length, which is measured in meters. 
So we have newtons per meter. That's my unit for spring constant. It hangs vertically and is connected to an object. I find the force uh, on the string by the object. So find the force on the string by the object. So let's assume, you know, a downward positive system, maybe the force on the spring by the object, or the force on the string by the object. Well, the force is going to equal to k times the extension length, which is just the actual length minus the natural length. So in this case, the spring constant, or the elastic constant, is 20 newtons per meter. The extension length is 2 meters, and so the force acting is 40 newtons. The force on the object by the string, well, if you draw your force diagram for the object, the force on the object by the string, well, the string is pulling it upwards. And that's going to be my 40, so the force on the object by the spring Right, by the string is going to be, uh, I've set a downward system, it's just going to be negative 40 newtons if this one is positive 40. So that's the force on the spring by the object. And the force on the object by gravity, if the object is stationary, well, if the object is stationary, the upward force has to equal to the downward force. So if I look back at my force diagram over here on the right, well, the downward force has to match the upward force. And that downward force would be the weight of the object, whatever it is. So the weight of the object, which is the force on the object by gravity, will be equal to 40 newtons. Find the mass of the object. Well, the mass of the object, we know uh, the weight is equal to mg. So mg is equal to 40. So the mass of the object is going to equal to 40 over g. And my units here will be kilograms. That's about, taking G to be about 10, that's about 4 kilos. So if I hang a 4 kilogram mass at the end of a string whose natural length is 10, and with elastic constant of 20 newtons per meters, well that string will extend to 12 meters. And just hang there. Okay? It's not bouncing. It's not moving around, it's just hanging there. And so that's what it is. So Hooke's Law, uh, learn the law by heart, look it up, research it a little bit, but most of all, practice questions. Okay.